on tonight? Hi everyone, who is on? It is Thursday. It's a little after 8.30. I am late this evening coming on, but I still wanted to honor my commitment and come say hi for a little bit. Gonna wait a few seconds and see who comes on to say hi to me. And then we could talk for a little bit. I'm all leaning, working on my posture. <laughs> so, um, I was supposed to have a restful day. I didn't really do that, but oh well. So who is on here? I am having a hard time seeing tonight. Come say hi to me. Hello. Hello, hello. Well, I'll introduce myself while I wait for some folks to pop on here. I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I am a board certified family medicine physician. I'm also a certified health coach and I help overwhelmed, overextended professionals like myself and yourself to navigate their health, manage their mindsets and live their best lives like never before. Follow me if you will and share if what we are speaking about resonates with you or you think it'll help someone else. Sharing is caring, I always say. So that's a little bit about me. Just waiting a few more minutes. Um, hopefully there's not too much noise in the background. Tonight we're gonna talk about efficiency and efficiency tips. Um, these are tips that I generated after years of working harder. <laughs> And hopefully, um, now that I've transitioned into working smarter, I found that my life has a little bit more balance. It's a little bit better balance. And I wanted to share some of those tips with some of you all. So again, just as an introduction for those who might be popping on after the fact, I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a board certified uh, family medicine doctor. I'm also a certified health coach. And I help overwhelmed, overextended, professionals like myself and yourself I help us to navigate our health manage our mindsets and live our best lives like never before if you if any of this resonates with you please follow me or share this video with your family and friends it may bless someone else awesome so let's get started I jotted them down because I didn't want to forget them I wanted to um, tell you um, a little bit about efficiency and the way I've managed to become more efficient um, over the past couple months um, and I won't be on here too long because I don't think I have much battery life um, so I will I will keep it brief so um, first off I should start by saying that um, for many years hey Carrie for many years um, in medical school in residency um, I struggle with just getting everything done. Now, if you've never, well, if you've been to your doctor, you know there's a lot happening behind the scenes. The doctor's doing noting and charting, there's labs being drawn, there's orders being put in. If it's a specific emergency, like in the emergency room, there's a lot of multitasking happening. And if you aren't specifically blessed or you don't feel blessed in the area of multitasking, sometimes, hey, Kelvis, sometimes it could feel challenging to keep a fast pace and feel like you were getting, hitting all your marks um, to keep someone well and healthy and whole. And so part of what you learn as, as you're training to be a physician is how to be very effective, very efficient, and not miss anything, be very thorough, so that you could actually help save lives and be beneficial to the folks who are actually coming to you for help. And so it is, it is usually very vital um, to navigate this and figure this out. And if you don't figure it out during working hours, a lot of folks, doctors specifically, have to take some of that work home. And so that's where, hey Tiffany, um, that's where we find that a lot of doctors may struggle with work-life balance. Now, if you are a professional, maybe you are in accounting or you are in nursing or you are in um, hospitality management, any of that, um, recruiting, you may also find yourself in a situation where uh, multitasking or being effective comes into play significantly or whatever other job you have and 
if you are not efficient and effective, that could spill over to the next work day or to the weekend, or you may take work home. Um, and that actually affects your life. You know, your family, your family life is affected because that work is hanging over your head. And if you don't take it home, maybe you roll it to the next day, that's also not effective because your, your following day is probably just as full as, the, as today. And so rolling work over is usually not beneficial. Hey, Chastity. And so for many years, I'm a very good doctor. I don't just say that. Um, I've been told that by my patients and colleagues. Um, but one of the things I struggled with was getting my documentation, like the charting done, like right away. Um, I could do most of it, but I always wanted to save everything a little bit so I could look over it again. And because, because part of who I am, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, I'm not a perfectionist anymore, but I struggle with just not quite wanting to close things out yet because I want to double check and triple check and quadruple check things. And what happens is instead of checking a task and being done with it, you wind up having unchecked boxes at the end of the day. You take them home and I'm like, I'll just sleep on, on this and think about it a little bit more. I may want to add something later. Uh, thank you, Chastity. And so before you know it, you find yourself rolling work over to following days and into the evenings. And that was really taking a toll, you know. C can you imagine having so many unchecked boxes at the end of the day that you go home and you scarf down dinner and if you have a family, you spend five or 10 minutes putting the kids to bed or, you know, spending time with your loved ones. And then you have to spend another three, four hours mulling over the tasks that should have been done during the day, um, trying to figure out how to get those boxes checked, um, going into the wee hours of the evening and maybe into the next day. And so, um, we all struggle at some point with figuring out, figuring this out. Usually when you start a new job, um, there is a learning curve. And sometimes that learning curve means you may have to come in early or stay late or take some tasks home while you learn the job and learn the equipment and the machinery or the, you know, the computer system or whatever it is. And so I, I would like to say that most of us at some point in our lives have found ourselves um, trying to catch up or as some folks will say, drinking from a fire hose and you just can't seem to get it all done. And so I've been there. And what I have learned over the years is a few tips that help me to become very efficient. I am efficient enough now to the point where those boxes are checked, everything's accounted for, everything's tucked in before I leave at 5.30 or whatever time I leave the office. Um, and I'm confident in the fact that um, I'm not taking anything home to roll over again. Um, and so it's not just checking the boxes, but feeling like you've done an efficient job and a very good job for the people that you are reporting to or, or who are requiring you to step up so that they could get the best of you. And so one of the first tips for efficiency that I figured out was to minimize distractions. Now this may not be for everyone, but I know um, for myself, I'm a very easily distracted person. And so, if there's chatter around me, I'm looking around, I'm trying to hear what's going on. So I had to learn to minimize my distractions. That may mean asking folks to move the chatter outside of my ear range if, you know, there's a congregation of folks around me trying to have a, a you know, a conversation. Or if, let's say I'm posted near the water cooler and that's where the talk happens or the coffee curreg or whatever it is and that's where the chatter happens. Maybe that may mean asking to be relocated or actually relocating yourself to a a, a place that's less trafficked in your office. That's definitely beneficial. Hey, Leroy. Um, sometimes when I'm working and I'm not in the process of actually actively speaking to someone, um, maybe I may listen to some soothing, calming music that kind of drowns out some of the sounds around me that's very distracting. That way I could hone in on what I'm doing and, and focus on my work. Believe me when I say those little seconds add up me not spending every little second looking around trying to see who's saying what and what's going on really made a difference in me completing some tasks in between whether it's refilling medicines or whatever else is going on maybe looking at lab work or whatever it made a huge difference in my day and uh, and so i know it could be beneficial to someone else so think about what's going on in your day if you're easily distracted um find ways to minimize the traffic and the chatter um that will be beneficial to you um, I guarantee it. Another way to minimize, um, to another way to be efficient during your workday 
is to know your resources and know when to use them. Um, for me, what that looks like is knowing, you know, that we have a social worker in the office or knowing that we have a respiratory therapist in the office or knowing that, okay, today we don't have this person in the office that's a resource to me, but maybe we have someone else down the street in another office that's a resource that I could refer out to. But it's knowing my resources and knowing when to use them because that could make the difference between um, me being efficient and me spending the whole day trying to track these resources down or trying to find these people who will be beneficial to my patients. If I need an x-ray, you know, is the x-ray tech in the office today? If she's not, is she nearby? If she's not nearby, is this someone who needs to go out and go to the emergency room? Just knowing your resources, whatever, whatever work you're in, whatever line of work you're in, if you are um, in marketing, maybe you wanna know some of the local photographers so that if your main person is no, not available, you have someone else you could call as a backup real quick. If you're into doing hair or cosmetology, maybe it's just knowing um, all the different hair stores around you so that if you run out of something while you're in the process of doing a last minute hair design or whatever it is, you know where you could go and find exactly what you need. So those are just examples, but it's not just knowing, but it's knowing when to pull the trigger and say, hey, I need to use these resources. And then number three is to manage expectations. Now, if you are like me, and if you're not, that's fine, but there's a lot of folks that are like me and um, I'm very easily excitable. Like I get really excited really easily. I'm also very easy to disappoint because I usually get my expectations up here and if I don't manage them well, I'm like, oh, you know, I get really disappointed. If you have a day and you have a certain expectation, like I know um, some days my, my staff knows when to tell me which days are gonna be really busy. All right, Dr. Wright, today we're gonna be seeing X, Y, and Z, and actually they tell me the day before or a few days before, so I can manage my expectations for that day. Maybe that's a day I won't get to have a full hour lunch. Maybe that's a day when I won't get to um, make a cup of coffee before I start seeing my first person. Maybe that is the day I need to make my coffee at home and bring it in in my cup already ready. Maybe that is the day I need to pack my lunch. So it's managing your expectations. It's knowing what's around the corner and being prepared uh, to um, handle it so that you don't get your feelings hurt or get in your feelings when things don't go the way you thought they should. This is really important for me because if you're having a moment of broken expectations, that's a moment that you're not focusing. That's a moment that you're not completing a task. That's a moment when you're patting yourself on the back and boohooing. And I'm not saying that's not important, um, but there's a time and place for that. And so if you are able to manage your expectations, and I struggle with this sometimes, you're more able to be efficient at work and more productive. Um, number four is to minimize gossip. This goes back to the distractions. Maybe you're not one to gossip much at work, and that's great. And maybe you don't even think you're a gossip. For me, I don't consider myself a gossip, but I am that person that's like, you know what, I'm gonna pray for so-and-so, and I think I'm being hopeful, but that could be considered gossip. And so if I'm stopping to pray for everybody and find out what everybody's needs are, um, and I'm not seeing patients as effectively because I'm doing that, well, that's not very helpful. So I'm not talking about just gossip like being malicious. I'm talking about sometimes just you think you're being helpful. You think you're passing along information. You're sharing information to help your colleague. But in that minute, that's, that's time you're not doing what you were hired to do. That's time you're maybe not doing your job. Is it something that maybe you could do after hours? Hey, Dr. Sam. Is it something you could do after hours maybe? Is it something that you could do on your lunch break or on a break? Um, I am I'm one to you know stop what I'm doing and listen to a colleague who's crying or pray with someone who needs prayer or pat someone on the back if they're having a bad moment. And I think we should do that. That's what makes us human. That's what makes our relationships at work beneficial. But ask yourself, is this, is this a beneficial conversation? Is this a helpful conversation? Am I being helpful is this necessary is this kind is this truthful or are we just being petty malicious gossipy spreading things and if if that's the case you want to minimize that as much as possible that's not what you're there for and the more you can minimize that the more efficient you're going to be because that's time that you could be using to complete the tasks that you have to complete at work so and my last tip about efficiency and I said I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget, is to be honest. Be honest about what you can do. Be honest about what you cannot do. Hey, Dr. Belinda, um, speak up. If you know that you are not adequately trained for something, say you're not. Be honest because the time you're going to take to pretend to do a task well that you aren't trained appropriately for, that you're not comfortable doing. Thank you. 
Hey, Vanessa, it's time that you're taking from actually doing um, a very good, efficient job at work. And then if you have to figure it out after hours, that's work you're taking home again. And so it's just being honest about what, what your expectations are, um, what you can and can't do for the job that you're hired to do, and um, just say it. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, like for me, maybe there's a new, they're implementing a new program on the computer system and I'm just struggling. Maybe they said, well, we need you to do X, Y, and Z on this computer system by the end of the day. And I haven't figured out how to navigate that system. The sooner I speak up and say, I'm having a hard time with the system. Can we have IT show me how to do this? Or can one of my colleagues come help me real quick? That's time that I have just saved myself from being too proud to say that I need help. So the more we're honest, and sometimes it's something else like, in, as a physician, there's times someone comes in and it's perplexing. They're like, well, what's this? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I could sit here and pretend and spend 50 minutes looking it up. Um, or I could say, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll get a specialist to look at it or I will get you the answer. Or I know it's not emergent, so you don't need to go to the ER or, pay, or the urgent care. But I will get you the information by the end of the day. Now you've saved yourself some time to to, and, and giving yourself some grace to step out of that encounter and find the information and follow up instead of sitting there saying things that maybe aren't necessarily truthful or you're not 100% sure of. And then you've got to backtrack later with truth and information that's beneficial uh, and that's time that you've lost. That's the ground that you've lost and sometimes in not being honest, hey Dr. Jessica, you actually lose face. So be honest, speak up, it will help with efficiency. So those are just some things I have found that have taken me, let me tell you, it's a, it has taken me from a place of doing work for three hours after work and doing work on the weekends and being guilty about not getting everything done during the day to having all my work done by 5.30, 6 at the max for most days, um, to going home and having dinner with my spouse and you know having a very good evening without any guilt or feeling bad or feeling like I didn't complete all my tasks and check all the very important boxes. And then I could go to work refreshed the next day with a cup of coffee or whatever and ready to tackle the day again. And so this has really helped me um, to be my best me and to show up for myself and to show up for my staff and to show up for my patients every day. And I just wanted to share some of those tips with you all. I'm not saying they're perfect and I'm not picking on anyone. If this doesn't fit for you, that's fine. You know, if, if one tip helps, great. Um, I just wanted to be very transparent and just tell you what worked for me. So I hope that helped you guys. If this if this helped, please share the video. Sharing is caring, I always say. Follow me um, if you like this type of content. I'm gonna try to bring more of this to you. And again, I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. I'm also a certified health coach and I help exhausted, overwhelmed, overextended professionals like myself and yourself to navigate our health, manage our mindsets, and live our best lives like never before. I look forward to spending more time with you guys on Facebook Live. Be blessed. Bye.